Welcome. This is my review of Goosebumps, more like a walkthrough sort of, because I'll be reading the stories in this book. So, this is the back. So, it's made by Real Stein, who used to like to read, write stories, horror ones, but he had to make it less scary for children. Came out in May 97, so. We're going through one, two, three, four, five, six, ten stories, and we'll start with the one of the star. So here we have I'm Not Lazy Beth, I Work Hard. Here right Jeffrey, my friend Beth roll her eyes. You work really hard, figuring out the easiest way to do things. That's not Beth, that's smart, I laughed. So we have Jeffrey here and his friend and girl. And they're playing with a vacuum cleaner or something. Oh, we're eating the garden with a vacuum cleaner. Well, that's real lazy. So that was one of my best ideas he talks about. Oh, sucking them up. And we see Beth looking for something. It's getting late afternoon, heavy clouds. So we're at page two and they've lost left the postal. Uh bit is a fast walker looks like. And they're moving around. And they go to a store. So I describe it as a heavy length of black suit called coated with red bricks. So it looks like a fire happened. Sales music store. Oh, uh, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> they go inside it. Uh, the sound creaks. A bit's like, don't go in there, something's going to happen. But the main character, Jeffrey, he wants to go in. So they look, the fire just burnt. So we find out he's going to just buy a guitar, he's dead. So Jeffrey ignores her, which is a bad thing. So the, while well, he finds the guitar. So they take the guitar, even though Beth's complaining. Hey, don't go in there, don't take this. Uh, the dad asks about the guitar. While well, he lies about it. And his dad's like happy. So he's late sleeping, then he hears a sound. The guitar been played, which is weird, since no one's touching it. There's a man across the room. Well, he thinks the man is real or something. He doesn't know who's the man. The man's like, you took the guitar. Uh, the man says, I can't go the back. Because he's dead. So, find out the guy's good at playing the guitar. He's called Memphis Willie. And Gertie is a guitar. They used to play the blues. So the man goes, he can teach him. So he starts helping me out. Says there we can be partners. So he's thinking his friend may have been dumb. So he looks, he's learning to play the tunes. But his fingers can't stop. He's trying to kill them, can't release them. So they, he keeps playing. But the Willy guy either left. So the guy says that he couldn't stop playing. So, yeah, his fingers have hurt him too much. The bedroom door opens. His dad's in the doorway. His dad's like, Happy that the son knows how to play. And says your mom can hear. Keep playing, keep playing. So it looks like he's cursed or something. So that was a very interesting short story. So, yeah, I'd say Jeffrey should have learned more, or like not gone in the store. Bought the guitar because he had to suffer consequences. So the next story is Tune in Tomorrow. 
So here we go for Elizabeth, who's watching some story. And she's friends with another girl, Laureen. She likes watching TV. She lives in Philadelphia. So they've moved to another town. Uh, I was having breakfast, sausages and eggs. So it's pretty hot, it looks like. So the father, she blue, so you can't understand her. So they've watched cable TV. Seven two different channels. That must be pretty good. Must have been a good price. So I should enjoy watching Looking Toward Tomorrow. Twelve years already there, eh? years or someone she left behind. So Elizabeth thinks that this story is similar to hers. Like the characters say it's dumb town, not much happening. But then something sort of happens which is similar to her story. The glass looks the same as that in the show. And it looks like she gets a message which similar. Yeah, a man gives her a letter. Which she thinks, well, this is on the show as well. Letter is dear Liz, the letter begins. Summer's here, pretty much the same as always. I went to the art museum yesterday. Watch the tourists run up and down the steps like rocking the movies. Boy, did they look stupid. Liz, the letter continued. I know I promised would visit you. The summer, but Kathy Morrison asked me to go to her place at Jersey Shore. Hope you understand. P.S. Lucky escaped from his cage last week. We looked all over, but we didn't find him until it was too late. I buried him in the yard. Sorry. So she throws the letter away, but she doesn't think it applies to her. So now she wants to watch another episode of Looking Toward Tomorrow. Like, it seems like it's one o'clock. Comes on. So, well, the mum thinks the show doesn't happen much, but the girl thinks it's realistic. The mum gets an accident, like on the show. So she's crying out, no mum. She calls 911, the ambulance. So she starts to think that maybe the show, what happened is true. So she first of all goes on the TV, when she tells a friend what happened, friend doesn't believe it, then she waits for one o'clock, so she turns it on, but not much happens, apart from the dog barking off screen, and the dog burying its fangs, then the TV goes off, so she'd wait. But when she rings the channel, they said that channel doesn't exist. And that they don't have that TV show on. The operator is surprised. But then we see what was going on. Someone else was actually watching her live. So it looks like there's a going on thing where everyone's in the TV world. So that was an interesting end for the book. I'm surprised that it ends that way. So in this bit, so Lisa is another character is watching another story, The Life of Elizabeth. Well, wow, that was surprising. So now the next one is Live Weight. <laughs> so, well, the character in this story says he hates fish. So he doesn't like the clammy, skilly skin. So he lives in a place where there's fish everywhere. Dogs, markets, and the restaurants. Oh, steak, <laughs> just fish every day. Mum cooks every day. Man, I used to eat fish every day when I was young. Then I got asthma. And they had to stop. So I'm surprised. 
fish every day would make someone sick, maybe. Uh, but now he's telling some. Oh, he's telling a guy called Duke. So the guy is not friendly and he used to hang out. So he's the only one there. So the kid Duke says we should go fishing. So. So Duke's got a lot of money. So he paying. Ah, Duke was thing out of eye. There's a dead fish. So, so the Duke guy is like afraid. So they go to a place to buy a boat. Called Live Bait. So this guy's like, okay, do go on. You scared? So they have a fishing contest. Well, I didn't catch the fish, looks like. No, I don't know the fish is trying to eat him, but since he's afraid, it happens. Well, then someone talks to a fish, you understand? So they buy the bait from my old man. So there's hundreds of glass jars in the room. They're big and small. So he's an expert um, on bait, the guy. Some spiders, some other things. So Duke pays a crumpled five dollar bill. What? I thought he was wealthy. Or well, maybe their five dollars must have been quite a lot for them. Yeah, it's sort of weird. Or maybe for them that was a lot. But we've come here, all these got us five dollars. Uh, yeah, for the bait, or five rolls, but then the boat has got seven rolls there. Uh, so he must have lied about the money. <laughs> so the guy makes a deal I'll make, if you give me the biggest fish you catch, I won't change your penny. So they make a deal. Uh, this is going to be interesting. So the boat is old. Well, of course, if you're just going to pay five dollars or seven dollars, the old guy is offering seven dollars an hour. So, of course, it must be in a quick buck mood. So, they go out to catch a fish, they use a worm, and the fish jump. Well, it must be big because the boat usually tips. So, I think maybe. Bad bait, but the biggest fish in the world rises up. So they catch the well, the bad catch it. They think they'll become fish food. Uh, so they get back to where they were. He goes, He helped catch me the big fish. So the big fish is like that this. He's been trying to catch up with Jumbo for 50 years. He goes, he was a bait I needed. Before a movie threw a net over our heads. So they're live bait for other fish. Ah, oh, so that's what's been going on. The old guy looks like he's been catching people. Maybe he was caught before. They use these guys. Yeah, what well, interesting end. So now the next story, something strange about Marcy. So we have some people here who noticed someone called Marcy. They didn't see him moving or any family. And they didn't hear her speak or move. I think it's strange. So this person plays with his friends on a tree, taking each other, rocking safely. Like to be outdoors, the rainwater. 
bare feet. But it seems that Marcy doesn't understand them or play with them. And she does a cold expression. They want to ask her things. But they couldn't ask her things if they tried because they didn't know. So one of the friends was laughing. So everyone starts laughing. And Marcy's gone. And then you find out she's watching them. The one invited a picnic. So I think that Marcy's evil for the reason. <laughs> just watching them going away. And she's alone. Then see she's following them. Around the trees. And she's got a bag strapped. And then she's watching them. So they notice she's got no family. And she lives in a tent. So they wonder if it was weird. So the guard gives them to eat. Um, Marcy gives some food. And then when she's called a doctor, she's been observing them. That's when they realize why Marcy's so strange. That, oh, she's not Rungatang. So these guys were males. And being Rungatangs. Oh, that's interesting. So I'll end this part for now.